Okay, guys, so in this part of the lecture, we'll talk about smoking cessation. Um, again, you know, I want to spend just a little special emphasis on this because smoking cessation is a leading risk factor for development of CUPD. Again, if you're you know, constantly exposing your cells to offending agents, noxious particulate, which is basically what you do when you smoke anything, right? Um, whether it's marijuana, whether it is, um, you know, a cigarette. Um, you know, your body has some cleansing or regulatory systems, but if we constantly expose our lungs to those, we're going to cause breakdown. We're going to cause damage. Again, smoking, leading risk factor for chronic lung disease worldwide. Um, and it's also one of the leading risk factors for heart disease, probably one of the worst things you could possibly do to your lungs. Um, and the, you know, the benefits are profound, right? Obviously going to improve respiratory symptoms, decreased bronchial hyper-responsiveness, um, you know, and again, as we age, our lungs do get a little bit more compliant, lung function decreases. That's why age is factor into our normative values for pulmonary volumes. Um, but if we smoke, it's going to accelerate that. Um, so if we stop, it's going to kind of put us back more on a normal curve. And I'll show some figures in a bit. Um, you might even see your heart rate and your blood pressure decrease within minutes. And this happens in every smoker at any point of the stage um, when they stop. Right? Even if you're a 20 pack per year smoker, these effects will happen if you stop. Um, and we can see these effects, the, the lung function improved considerably within a week of cessation. Right, That's why it's so cr crucial that we you know, um, try to encourage patients to do this. And we'll show some figures as to why. Um, and again, no matter the time that you quit smoking, um, you're still going to reap some benefits. And, and, and again, the earlier you can do it, the better. People who consistently smoke an average of less than a cigarette per day over their lifetime still have 64% higher risk of earlier death than never smokers. And those who smoke between 1% and 10% pack per day had an 87% higher risk of, of earlier death than the non-smokers. So again, like, you know, there's no such thing. I mean, we hear this often. Well, I don't really smoke. I have a you know a cigarette here and there when I drink. Okay. There is no such thing as casual smoking. And again, I, I, I may be a little bit biased here, but um, we know what you're doing. People die right in in house in in fires from smoke inhalation. Even an acute exposure to smoke is not good for your lungs. So the the more you can kind of cut back, the better. So again, individuals who smoke one to 10 cigarettes per day have an average of, have an 87% higher risk of earlier death than those who never smoke. 12 times the risk of dying from lung cancer than never smokers, more than six times the risk of dying from respiratory disease. Makes sense, you're constantly offending your lungs. Even individuals who smoke, you know, an average of less than one cigarette per day over their lifetime. So this is like, this is these social or casual smokers only smoke when they drink or do something social, um, have a significantly higher risk than those who never smoke, 64%, nine times higher risk of dying from lung cancer, right? And obviously, there is also significant increase in cardiovascular disease risk, in, in stroke risk. Again, we're, we're exposing our, our vasculatures um, to some pretty nasty stuff. Um, now, it's important to note that even if you are, it's not a foregone thing, right? If you if you quit and you're a casual smoker, you, you smoke when you drink or just with friends, you know, um, you can still reduce your mortality, you can still make significant inroads, but it still will be slightly higher than never smoking. Um, so again, you can make benefits, but the best thing is to never start. Um, and you know, typically if you quit earlier, you'll have better benefits. So I want to stress a couple things. It's a way to, way to approach this, you know, never start, nothing good about it, nothing good about it. And even if you smoke a little bit, you can have significant complications. Um, it still is better, right? Um, if you're a casual smoker than a habitual smoker, but still way better to just never smoke. But if you do casually smoke, right, you can make improvements if you quit. Right, so the argument people say, well, I'm gonna get, you know, I've been smoking here and there, you know, for how many years, I've been casually smoking, you know, why don't, you know, it's, it's no better if I just smoke, you know, a full pack per day. That's not true. Um, and again, the earlier you quit, the better, right? So again, if you never smoke, great. Um, can keep up with that. If you do smoke, try to cut back, you know, and even if you're a casual smoker, 
try to cut back to nothing. There's nothing is ever going to be better than not smoking. Um, there's, there's, there's no such thing as casual smoking. That doesn't exist. Okay. And again, other things we hear often, people talk about utilizing, um, you know, hookahs and utilizing uh, vape pens. We've seen a lot of, a lot of these out uh, being used now. And then they're being pushed as a safer alternative. Let me, let me stress this right now. There is no, nothing your lungs are designed to breathe in other than clean, warm, and humidified air. That's it. Um, they're designed to do that. They're designed to keep that air clean and humidified and warm when it gets to your lungs. If you're constantly exposing it to something else, it's not going to be good for your lungs. And while combustion cigarettes are probably better or probably worse off for these than these uh, um, you know, vaping cigarettes, um, these were not designed to be smoked long term. They were, they were never designed to do that. Um, they were designed to wean people from combustion cigarettes, um, to be a temporary bridge. And we're finding that the uh, di diacetyl, which is used in a lot of these e-cigarettes, vape pens, can cause very aggressive, incredibly aggressive, fibrotic changes to the lungs. Um, it's actually one of the bigger concerns now in respiratory medicine that we've finally gotten like smoking rates down they're around 13 percent which is great um, it's getting better but now we're facing another chronic um, smoking like behavior in kids with these e-cigarettes and these have all kinds of other effects There's nicotine exposure to young brains is not good um, and again like the um, you know people say well it's you know it's not you're using a you know a, a black market or bootleg version of your um, vape pen. Um, well, there's a study that was done at Harvard that looked at 39 out of 50, um, 51 major e-cigarette brands, okay, which um, contain diacetyl, right? They also found that two other harmful chemicals to your lungs um, were present in, uh, you know, sorry, 92% of those e-cigarettes had at least one of those uh, three harmful chemicals, whether it's diacetyl, uh, pentanidione or uh, cetione. Um, we're in at least one of them. So again, don't believe the hype. These are not safer options, right? Like it's not just vaping. It's still not good for your lungs. Your lungs are designed to breathe one thing that is clean, warm, humidified air. If you're exposing it to some particulate or noxious um, you know, particle, whether it's marijuana smoke, it's still smoke. Whether it's a vape, it's still not clean air. Whether it's a hookah, still tobacco, and actually we find might be worse for people because uh, they breathe in a lot more of it. So again, there is do not believe the hype. There's no such thing as casual smoking. E-cigarettes are still not good for you. Hookah is not good for you, um, and neither is smoking marijuana. Um, if you're still smoking, same thing with cigars. Same thing with 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 um, pipes. If you're still breathing in something that's not not warm, clean, humidified air. And again, looking at the benefits. So um, if we look at the smoking and lung you know, function, you know, if we plot this over time, again, you know, if, you, if you age, your lung function does begin to gradually decrease, right? That happens, there's those you know, changes to elastin, the structure of the airways. But if you smoke and you continue to smoke, that reduction is gonna be a lot more rapid. Um, so if you were you know, continuing to smoke, your, your, your deterioration of lung function is gonna be very aggressive when you're looking at FEV1. Um, However, if you stop at age 45, you can make a significant inroad in terms of your, you know, your risk for disability, right? It's going to be much better than it would be someone age matched, um, even if they, uh, you know, you know they, they, if they quit at 45 compared to someone who's just continued. Even if you are at age 65, right, you smoked for many years prior and you stopped you're gonna make significant benefits. So again, it's better to never smoke. It's if you're smoking a lot, try to cut back. It's always gonna be better to, to not smoke. And no matter when you wanna try, right, there's no better time to, to do it than now, right? The earlier you can do it, the better. And no matter how old you are, you can still make benefits if you quit. Um, and again, just looking at, at the, again, the effects of you know smoking cessation. So these were individuals who uh, stopped smoking, were persistent with smoking cessation, and those who continued to smoke. 
And again, we can see these effects. So these are people who smoke, they quit, they continue to quit. Lung function is preserved, and those who continue to smoke got worse. And again, we're doing this over five years. So again, you can have very, very profound, long-lasting effects. Effects. So while we might not be a, um, you know, per, you know, we not be smoking cessation educators, so there are advanced certifications you can get in this. Um, you need to be aware of this, right? Maybe you know, broach this with your patients. Um, so some key quick facts: most smokers report that they want to quit. Um, Forty percent try to stop smoking annually, which is I think more people are aware of. Like this is probably not good for my lungs. Um, how it's it's difficult. It's a, it's an addicting behavior, right? Something you do every day. And we're finding that those who smoke a lot have more difficulty, and those who wake up you know, within 30 minutes and need to smoke um, have a much higher risk of, of, of failing um, smoking cessation, which is something they're ingrained in. Um, so there are some medications patients are given, um, bupropion or Zyban. You might see Chantix out there, which help with, with cravings, withdrawal syndromes. Um, you might see nicotine replacement therapy, again, to you know, mitigate the high people get from smoking tobacco. Um, so you might see that prescribed to patients. If someone in your clinic does smoke, I really strongly recommend like, hey, like, you know, broach a conversation with them because it's gonna impact their overall health and then see if they're willing to maybe work with a smoking cessation counselor because again, you know, there's no better time to start or to stop smoking um, or to start smoking cessation, but to stop smoking, no better time to do it than now, no matter how old you are, no no matter how long you've been smoking, you can make significant improvements if you stop. And not just with your lung health, with your overall health. And again, this is um, just wrapping up here. We went over our intervention matrix, um, looking at different benefits for certain meds. Um, you know, again, our lavas, our samas, steroids, leukotriene inhibitors, oxygen therapy. Um, what I have at the end here is exercise. So uh, one of the most important things we can do for patients with any respiratory condition is make sure that they're exercising. Um, and we'll get more into that uh, next week in our pulmonary rehab lecture. Um, but uh, we will also be covering some of our airway strategies and other things that we can do to help clear our lungs and maybe breathe a little bit better. All right, so that is our pulmonary pharmacology unit in a nutshell. Thank you.